Hi guys, what's going on? It's your girl, the Sky Zone. I am having a, a internet connection issue going on at my home. I'm not sure, but best believe that I am in the process of getting that connection fixed and looked at, okay? Um, I believe uh, my son purchased me a uh, device, and I believe that device is draining all of the broadband, if I'm speaking correctly. And uh, we need to get a technician out to rectify the issue. Till then, guys, I will be making pre-recorded videos. Now, what I want to talk about was Miss McLean and how uh, powerful she has played in the life of Mr. Kelly, R. Kelly, okay? Um, the, the readings that I've been doing uh, on the book has just been, man, they, they have been completely emotional. It help, it's helping me to understand him a lot better. And I hope that it does the same for you. Let's take a look here, okay, at Miss McLean. And let's take a look. I want you to look at her firsthand of her no-nonsense uh, persona and how she reprimands and handled her classroom very well, in much detail, as Mr. Kelly stated in his novel. Let's check her out. I'm going to open this up a little bit wider so you can see her in action. I'm going to get up and start singing and look like a non-singer with me because i that's me. I'm music. I love music. I am music. You're going to sing it right or you're not going to sing it. You're yelling and screaming and spitting. You can stay on out there and yell and scream and spit. But when you come up here, you're going to have to what? Sing. What did I say? Sing. And then um, it, I prepare and you don't prepare yourself. It's better not to what? Get up. Yeah, until you prepare your what? Sam, so I give these people lessons every Saturday for no money. The same lessons, they pay $70 and $80 downtown. They pay $20 for me. Only because I believe in my race and I believe in, in having music out there. But I believe you got to be prepared. Now, you know you want to sing. You should have had it together. You hear me? So don't nobody think I'm hard because I'm really very nice. I'm really very nice until it comes to singing. You will either do it right or you won't sing. And if I get my hands on you, you will sing. There will be no doubt about it. We're going to close with what a wonderful world. But before we do that, all the people who made this possible, Mrs. Um, uh, Sandra Watkins, Chairman, will you please call their names and let us thank them. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've been a very good audience. We are deeply grateful for you believing in us and for you coming out here to hear this wonderful talent and to see how... Miss McClean, as you can see, did not play no damn games. She let them know from the jump, listen here, if you ain't coming here to sing, don't waste my dog on time. You know, you got to respect teachers like that. You got to respect it. I respect her. I take my hat off to her. I can see, too, how she helped cultivate uh, Robert. You know what I mean? I can really see it. And uh, she also taught him opera. I found that to be very profound, very interesting, too. I mean, a black kid, come on, singing opera. Who would even think that a black woman would even know how to sing opera? But let's go a step further. Gotcha. 
And my daddy was the pastor of Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church. My mother's brother was Thomas A. Dorsey. And uh, when I was six years old, um, Uncle Ted, we called him Uncle Ted. I stayed with Uncle Ted until I was uh, 12. He wrote, Precious Lord, uh, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am born. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. It was a, a he had began to write music. And this music that he wrote was a combination of the things he went through in life. I used to observe him writing all the time. He had a long uh, piano, long white uh, standard piano, not a grand, just straight piano. And he used to come in and really play at the piano. And he would tell me, how do you like that? And I said, oh, I like it. Said, That's good stuff. music every Saturday in here, right here, and I still do, and so I wasn't interested in trying to start a school. I was just interested in the, the kids who really want to learn. All of it is music. It's in a great big bag, and you work to control it. And when you do, you pit, pull, reach in that bag and pull out what you do best. And it becomes yours. And that's what I think people have to do. But they do have to train. And without training, it's nothing. With training, it's great. music like she said she don't want nothing nobody do nothing for her unless they gonna do it right she said she very strict when it come down to what you do for her okay that woman got standards and, and she has morals and rules okay and basically she got boundaries you know when you got boundaries that means you just ain't letting any and everybody get through there and come on any way they want to okay and you got to respect that when a person has boundaries let's go further guys let's check out another clip Let's now see some of her work in progress. And this time, not just at Mr. Sylvester Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let's check out some of the uh, choir that you saw in that footage. Let's take a look now at some of them. Hold on. Uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to get it nice and... <laughs>
white, black. It didn't matter to Miss McLean. She worked with all people. Let me try to turn this here. Okay, very good. We got a good turn there. Okay. Um, it did not matter. Okay, and I, and I found that to uh, show just how much of a phenomenal. Now I look like my eyes is crooked, but bear with me because I don't know which way to look. I don't know if I should look over here. I suppose I should be looking over there, but it, I hope I'm looking in the right spot. I know I ain't, yeah. But anyway, um, I I found that I find that to be very uh, just just it just defines what type of teacher she is. Um, let's check out something else, guys. Let's check it out. Hopefully, it, it will play from this direction. Hopefully so. Let's see here. Let's check it out. Let's see if I can turn it. Yeah. Let's check out something else here. about Miss McLean. Let's check it out. <laughs> century and so on you should know and by the way she is also a prolific composer of choral music and the pastor of a church what great wow. real renaissance woman very busy yeah. oh, and all the students lives that she has touched so many more than she can count yeah they're everywhere on the opera the operatic stage and singing everywhere oh that's true wonderful. legacy thank all right. you thanks harry appreciate it well it's perfect weather to hear the blues. The Chicago Blues Festival is underway right now. Um, that, to me, does define an excellent teacher. Someone who has changed and will change the lives of many. And um, I definitely can see uh, that she has touched a lot of people. Jennifer Hudson, she is uh, actually working with her son, and he... That little boy has a phenomenal voice on him, just like his mom. And uh, I, I, I believe he was going to touch the big screens one day, just like his mother. Let's go a step further and let's check out something else. Now, this particular article I picked up because... Um, in the book, Solar Coaster, you know, it was amazing how Robert talked about how as a kid, he uh, 
felt so much about he, he heard music he understood music and he was so young and i found that to be i'm like dang yeah i wonder did he really feel that music like that did he really you know i wonder dang like really that young you know and it just confirmed and solidifies when god gives you a gift it is yours okay and this next story here is confirmation of that even though it has nothing to do with miss mclean and nothing to do with robert per se but it is a living testimony that no matter how old you are that when God blesses you with a gift, it's yours. Check out this footage, guys. The six-year-old from Atlanta, Georgia, won first prize in the American Prodigy International Piano and String Competition. What got him there was this amateur video taken by his father. He's playing Mozart one of his favorite composers, along with Bach and Chopin. Music brings me happiness, and I want to bring the audience happiness. Jean's parents say William always responded to music. Whenever there's music in the house, he jump and he moves. So we just feel he loves music. When he was two, they bought him a $20,000 piano. Their friends thought they were crazy. But they had a hunch he would take a liking to the instrument. This video was taken when William was one. Zhang's parents wanted him to start lessons at two or three, but everyone told them he was too young. We feel very frustrated. He can punch the little key and make some beautiful sound. Why don't you teach him? But no, nobody wants to teach him. So his parents, who didn't play instruments themselves, taught him to play baby songs. Then at four and a half, he began piano lessons. Today, he practices up to three hours a day. It's like the best team. Parents, students, and the teacher. We work together. All that work paid off. In January, the family found out William had won the competition. The news came in an email. I didn't want to tell them because I want to make sure. Did I look it wrong? So I blow it up on my desktop computer screen and check first place. And then I tell them we, should, we were just so thrilled, so excited. Then came the big day when Zhang performed at Carnegie Hall. He played his favorite, Mozart. One of the youngest to play, his performance was flawless. The family has met with Juilliard and other prestigious institutions to get advice on how best to cultivate William's talent. William isn't sure where he's headed, but says piano is definitely in his future. Maybe I want to be an artist, maybe a pianist, or maybe composer or piano teacher. Whatever he decides, William is already firmly on the path to a bright future. William is definitely on a uh, path to a bright future. That indeed he is. Man, it's just phenomenal. I mean, what if she had to listen to people telling her that her son is too young for you to be spending all this money on and all that? That's why you can't let nobody tell you. Uh, about your kids and just like that song that we heard before the clip don't let nobody turn you around now we're going to go a step further and take another look at Miss Lena McLean Hi Composer Reverend Dr. Lena McLean musical um, treasure, a national treasure, living legend here uh, in the United States and over the world. You are one of America's foremost composers. Well, I don't know about that, but... And many people don't know that uh, you have so many uh, works that are that are published. I write a lot. I write a lot. If uh, I'm in a situation and I'm inspired, uh, I will write about it. And... Uh, I just love music, and so that has been my my gift, you know.
that sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? How she said uh, she writes about it. I can, uh, you know, in the book, Solar Coaster, Robert uh, also testified that that is what he does as well. Now we're going to look at Robert. Let's take a look at R. Kelly. Let's let him tell you himself. Loves. Yeah. I mean, before that with the, the TP3, like you said, with the trap thing, the whole trapped in the closet thing, it's become its own brand, its own franchise. Like, it's its own thing. Like, again, you've, you, you had, like, sort of, like, opera elements and certain, like, theatrical elements in your music. Like, what made that feel right that that came together and was, like, trapped in the closet, like, the, the situation came together? Well, b believe it or not, man, gr growing up with my mom, I used to watch the old Elvis movies, you know, and uh, Elvis, you know, he would... He was singing a lot of his movies, and I was like, "Wow, he's singing!" You know, but he would be singing it, but it would be a story. And uh, and then when I met Lena McLean, you know, uh, she taught me to write plays. She she had us writing plays in school and and uh, things like that. So when I grew up, as far as my music and everything, and then I got my deal, I started incorporating some of the stuff that inspired me when I was a kid, or, or Lena McLean taught me, into my music, and I guess it gave it its own style, you know what I'm saying, like doing operas and things like that. I used to sing opera, I know opera, it goes, uh, Alma del Cori, Spirito del Alma, San Precostante, Tato de Ro, Tato de Ro, Tato de Ro, Alma del Cori, Spirito del Alma, San Precostante, Tato de Ro.